Like, why are you putting so much pressure on yourself? Why? Why though? How does that help you? How does pressuring yourself make you feel like you can accomplish anything at all? Relax. <laughs> Dealing with anxiety. It's tough, but this is what I've done in order to deal with my own anxiety. And let me just tell you, I was having a slight anxiety attack before I started filming. So, um, it works. I got off my ass. Hey. <laughs> So, first things first, just get up. Just get up. Get off your butt and do something. Do some jumping jacks. Do a little dance routine. Like, walk around. Stretch. Move. Because a lot of the reason why you're feeling stuck emotionally is because your 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 physical world lacks movement. When you physically don't move, mentally you slow down a lot as well. So if you're not exercising, start doing something active. And if you think about it too much, you're going to stop yourself from doing what it is that you wanted to do in the first place. So just do it. Get up. Don't think about it. With social media and everything, there's just so much more pressure to be perfect and to be good at everything and to just exist in this world in which mistakes don't happen and success just materializes from nothing but that's not real that's not real the only and I mean the only way to learn anything at all is through mistakes you make some mistakes and you learn from them and then you don't do the stupid thing again period Imagine the worst case scenario of the thing that you're anxious about. Often with anxiety, you jump straight into the worst case scenario, or at least what you imagine the worst case scenario to be, and you put all your worry into it. So first, imagine the worst case scenario, and then, after you've imagined it, it. If that is the worst thing that can possibly happen, then there are so many exponentially better things that can happen than that one worst case scenario. So accept it. If you can't accept it, find a solution for the worst case scenario. So let's imagine, for example, for example, you are trying to start your own business, right? What's the worst case scenario of that? Well, the worst case scenario is that your business fails and you potentially lose a lot of money. So, if you want to start a business, accept that that is a very real possibility. Just accept it. It can happen. And then, prepare for it. Find a solution. Well, if I don't want to lose a lot of money, I want to start this business though. If I don't want to lose everything, maybe what I should do is save a lot of money before I start this business venture so that I have a nest egg 
or maybe what I could do is start on a really small scale have my you know first customers be my friends and you see when you get into that solution orientation suddenly the thing that you were worrying about is not so taxing anxiety just takes our minds hostage really it takes our minds hostage and stops us from actually finding the solutions that we're looking for but that doesn't have to be the case once you have started the solution oriented mindset you start making plans and doing them so this in and of itself can be a source of anxiety as well right because okay you have all these grandiose ideas in your head you have this beautiful image of all the things that you want to accomplish in your life but then the how, the how is what gets people back into the anxiety roller coaster. That's why it's so important to just start small. Just start small. Again, you don't have to be a perfectionist. You don't have to have a thousand customers right out of the gate. You don't have to win everybody's love and affection the moment you meet like it it doesn't the goal itself doesn't have to be as lofty as you're making it and the execution of that goal doesn't have to be as perfect as what you're making it right it, it just it really doesn't like why are you putting so much pressure on yourself why why though how does that help you how does pressuring yourself make you feel like you can accomplish anything at all? Relax. <laughs> like when it comes to planning things, you just really don't have to be doing as much as you think you do. You have to be doing something though. That's the thing, you have to be doing something. So, start small. Baby steps. The book that I want to talk about first in regards to this is How to Stop Worrying and Start Living by Dale Carnegie. He's the same author that wrote How to Win Friends and Influence People. Bestsellers, bestsellers, and understandably so because that book has so many just nuggets and gems and diamonds, rubies, sapphires, topaz, all, all the gemstones, all the gemstones are in this book, honestly. The biggest and most important takeaway from that book, though, for me, was taking things one day at a time. Like, people say it all the time, the past is already gone. The future doesn't exist yet. All you have is this moment right now, right here, to do what you need to do in order to put down the foundations of where you want to be eventually. You have today to do it. So like, what's stopping you from going to the gym? What's stopping you from starting that, you know, diet? Or um, starting that book that you wanted to write? What is stopping you? I'll tell you what's stopping you. The idea that you need to finish it the same day you start it. Stop thinking like that. Perfection is not the point. The sooner you start something, the sooner you can refine it and make it better. But for now, 
The idea living in your head isn't going to become anything while it's in your head. So that's a really important point to remember. Just do the little bit that you can 